I'm having a weird energy today. We're gonna figure this out. Whoa. Huh? Am I being weird? I feel like I'm being weird. Welcome back to Sola Goes Off Script. So today I'm gonna take this big pile of greens and we're gonna go off script and what are we doing? <laughs> Hold on. Welcome back to Sola Goes Off Script. It feels so weird to say my name. I just wanna say welcome back to me going off script. Welcome back to Sola Goes Off Script. And today I'm gonna show you how to go off script with this whole big pile of greens. We are gonna braise them and wilt them down until they're super silky and tender and then it's gonna coat some pasta gonna be some beans in there. It's gonna be a nice, hearty, and warm way to have your greens. Once you get this formula down, you can really do it with any greens and beans and things you have around. Before you grab your greens, make sure to like and subscribe to see what other things I'm gonna take off script. Good girl. Ah, <laughs> she bit my finger. The first thing we're gonna do is soak our pasta. This is a really cool technique that I read about in Ideas and Food. And we're gonna soak uh, five ounces of pasta in one and a half cups of water. And what happens is it, it, the pasta swells and hydrates so that when we go to cook it, it doesn't need nearly as much water or as much time to cook. It's like really, really, really cool how it just like cooks up in like five minutes. So it needs to soak for at least 15, but we're gonna be doing a lot of other stuff, so it'll have enough time to do that. And then we can add our pasta to our cooked down greens and it's, there's not gonna be a whole lot of liquid in there, but it's fine. The liquid that's in here is enough to cook it up perfectly al dente. Um, and then the pasta is also gonna make this liquid really nice and starchy. So when we simmer it together, it's gonna make our whole dish super creamy. So the cool thing about this is that because we're pre-soaking our pasta, when it goes to cook, all of the shapes cook at pretty much the same time. So this is a great place if you have like a handful of this and a handful of that, throw it all together into here. I actually always leave a handful of pasta in the box and it, my husband hates it. But I don't want a little bit too much. I'd rather save it for later for this dish. And I'm using chicken broth just because the pasta is gonna really soak in all that flavor. Um, but you can use water if you've got. Um, if you're gonna use water instead of stock or broth, then I would add a big pinch of salt into the water and dissolve it so that we can season our pasta right away, starting from the beginning. So for the first dish I'm gonna do, it's really inspired by southern collard greens that are cooked down with ham hocks and are really smoky, silky, and rich. It's what, probably one of my favorite sides. So we're gonna start by rendering out some bacon to give us that similar smoky vibe that you get when you are cooking collard greens. Um, so here I have a few slices of bacon that I cut up into like half inch pieces going into the pot. The pot's on medium heat. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of water and that just helps the fat render out. It just helps everything get going so we don't have to add extra fat because there's plenty of fat in the bacon and the bacon fat's really nice and flavorful. So it's a really nice medium to cook everything in. So the water just kind of like warms up the bacon and helps it render out a little bit more evenly than if you were to just pop the bacon in a pan that's totally dry. So I'm using bacon, the original, but if you use turkey bacon or like a vegan bacon, then you're gonna need to add a little bit of fat because it doesn't have enough to, to give to you to cook it all in. So if you're using turkey bacon, I would throw a tablespoon of oil in there in addition to the water and render it all out. And vegan bacon, just go a little heavy on the fat. It'll taste great, just you need a little bit more fat. So this is gonna start sizzling and, and cooking down. This is gonna take a few minutes, so this is a good time to get your prep out of the way. So I'm gonna smash and chop some garlic. You don't need to be like precise here. We just wanna, you know, get tiny pieces. We want little itty bitty pieces that are gonna melt and cook down with everything else. I know Vito. They're really excited because the bacon's, bacon's uh, cooking down. Everything is smelling bacony. The good old smash and top. So when you, when you do this little water trick, it starts to sound like an, a very aggressive sizzle, which might be alarming, but that just is because the oil and water don't mix. And as soon as the water cooks off and you just have your rendered out fat, it'll, be, it'll become quiet. And then after that, your bacon will start to brown. 
See how loud it is right now? That's because we're just getting started. There's still water, there's still water in there. It doesn't like being there with the oil. They're mad at each other. But, so the fat's gonna win. This recipe uses a whole pound of greens. I'm using collards for this, but you can really use any kind of green you want. I'm gonna strip them off their stems because the stems are super tough and you don't want that. But um, the one thing you want to take note of is whether your green is tender or hearty. Collards, so I'm gonna be doing everything a little weird because I cut my thumb. This is the worst cut I've had in years. I almost lost my thumb. What happened? Uh, I was making a kale salad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if I look like I'm holding stuff weird and doing stuff weird, it's because my thumb is hanging on by a thread. Anyways, uh, what was I saying? Collards are hearty greens, which means that, you know, you can tell if your greens are tender or hearty by just giving them a taste. Um, hearty greens kind of are stringy, a little tough. Tender greens are nice and crisp and you can easily eat them raw. So if you've got um, a hearty green, like a collard or kale or carrot tops or what else is a hearty green? A squirrel. Those need to cook down a little bit longer to get like a nice silky texture. So we're talking like 40, 45 minutes. For tender greens like dill, parsley, radish tops, uh, Swiss chard, that stuff cooks down really, really quick. 10 minutes. So um, the only thing you really need to think about is if you have a hearty or a tender green. I don't really like to mix the two because if you cook if you cook a hearty and tender green together, the tender greens are gonna get overcooked and a little bit muddy by the time the hearty ones are nice and soft. But if you just know which one's which, then you're good, you're good. I don't think people eat enough collards. I don't know why kale is the rage, you know? I'm a big fan of collard salads, just like a kale salad. Give it a shot. I think call, it's gonna be 2021's gonna be all about collards. I can feel it. We're getting over kale, you know? I know, I know, Clementine loves it. Clementine, you want a leaf? You want a leaf? Yeah. She loves her greens. She's running away to her bed now. She's gonna gnaw on that for the rest of the afternoon. So I've got bacon here as my like flavor base, but you can really use anything that's got like a lot of punch of flavor. It doesn't have to be meat either. Go for like tons of uh, melted down onions, that's like a really nice, as in really nice, sweet, deep, savory flavor. Garlic, ginger. Um, we're gonna use anchovies in the second dish, which always brings a lot of punch. But um, get creative. If you don't have a lot of aromatics around, a spice blend would be really good. Some adobo seasoning, um, garam masala, ooh, little berberry spice, anything. Like, you just want something punchy to get it going to make the whole thing like super flavorful because greens, it's a lot of greens. You know, greens, they just taste like greens. You gotta give it a little bit of help to taste, taste more than just like greens. Okay, so I have stripped all of this. I'm gonna stack my leaves. She's waiting here for another leaf. Not after you bit me. That was bad. That was, she's, she's going through her adolescence so she's turned into an absolute monster. All of you people who got quarantine puppies, call me in two years. The honeymoon ends. I know, I know. She's like, she just really wants the leaf. Okay, so I like to cut it lengthwise once just to shorten the pieces a bit. And then we're gonna cut it crosswise into like quarter inch strips. But you don't have to be really precise here because um, it's all gonna melt down. But it's just really nice to have small-ish pieces because our pasta is small-ish and you kind of want everything to be about the same size. And also, this is how I cut my thumb. I was cutting kale like this and I wasn't paying attention and you know, I was like drinking some wine, listening to a podcast, totally zoning out and I just went, went for it right down through the thumbnail, almost to the bone. I have no first aid kit. I was on my last band-aid and, and Clementine was just trying to like lick up all the blood off the floor, which was like freaking me out. I have a problem with blood too, so I immediately passed out. It's really dramatic. <laughs> Your face is... <laughs> I wish people could see that. You should record this screen. 
I was by myself. I called my husband and then he talked me through the, he, he like is the first aid guy at work. He wraps up everyone's stitches and stuff. So he talked me through it. We got through it okay. But now we have more bandages in the house now. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was it with that knife, Sola? It was with this knife. <laughs> Look at how much fat came out of it. This is why I don't like to add fat in the beginning to render it out because there's plenty. Look at my collards. Wow. And my thumb is intact. It looks like so many greens. I know, but it's totally not. It'll cook down into nothing, you'll see. Believe me. But right at this point, I think it's really pretty. It looks like confetti. Clem is super into it too. Oh God. <laughs> now that my bacon has cooked, I'm gonna scoop it out with a slotted spoon. I'm gonna try and leave behind as much fat as possible because that's what we're gonna cook everything in. And then we're gonna set the bacon aside, add it back to our dish right at the end so it stays nice and crisp. Scoop, scoop. What's also nice is there's a little bit of fawn that's developed. Fawn is the, the brown bits that build up on the bottom of the pan when you cook protein and it's just like has like really caramelized concentrated meaty flavor so that'll also add a, a lot of nice flavor to our dish okay last bacon bit we did it would you like to see my bacon here we'll bring it in close whoa huh whoa look at that Cool, a little rotate. Now, I'm gonna add my chopped garlic. Turn this back on. We're just gonna cook this for a couple minutes. We just want to bring out the like aromatics of the garlic and soften them a bit, but we're not gonna go until it's brown. Just, you know, a, a, a little kickstart, kickstart the cooking. It's gonna fully break down when we braise it with all the greens and stuff. And I've also got chili flakes. So as you can tell, like, so we're starting with really, really flavorful things. We've got bacon, bacon fat, garlic, chili flake. Really want to start with a big punch of flavor at the beginning so that our greens, pasta, everything that simmers in there is going to be really nice and flavorful. I'm using a full half teaspoon because I like it a little spicy, but you can use less if you want. But, but don't skip it. Just, just add a pinch. It really like balances out the richness of everything, kind of heat always kind of cuts, cuts fat and stuff like that, so that's nice. Now it's time to ready your braising engines. All of these collards are going in. I promise it's gonna cook down into nothing. This is, this is four portions. You will see. This is a great way to eat so many greens. It feels so rich and so luxurious and you don't feel like you're just eating a bowl of vegetables. Okay, for my cooking liquid, I'm going with more chicken broth. Uh, it just adds a really nice savory rich flavor and as it cooks down the broth gives it a lot of body I'm going for a homemade broth so that has a lot of natural gelatin that's going to make it feel super like Sticky and rich and awesome, but if you have water, that's totally fine, too We have so many things, you know making a lot of flavor happen So don't worry about it. You just might need a bump up the salt bump up the fat, but it'll still be delicious if you have bouillon cubes or bouillon powder, that's a great thing to throw in here. Um, just the one thing to be cautious of is this is gonna cook down quite a bit. I put two and a half cups of broth in here and it's gonna simmer down to like just barely a cup. So if you are using bouillon cubes or, or um, bouillon powder, just make sure you don't overdo it because it, it, it could get too salty. But right now I'm gonna start with a big pinch of salt and some pepper. And I'm gonna bring this whole thing up to a boil, mix it up really well, and then we're gonna add our beans. It's a beans and greens party. You gotta have the beans. So I'm using canned cannellini. You can use any kind of bean you like. I like to use a bean that's already cooked. Um, it doesn't have to be canned. If you have like cooked beans at home, that's fine too. But we're not gonna be cooking it down long enough for us to cook a dry bean from scratch in here. So, you know, but you know, you know what you could do if you wanted to cook your beans from dry? Okay, we're going off script. We're going off script, off the script. 
what I would do is I would soak the beans, um, then cook your beans until they're like almost there, and then throw all of your greens in there. We're gonna do a little reverse situation. And then let your greens cook down. That it will also be really, really delicious. So many recipes coming at you, huh? It's just once you get the concept, you can kind of do whatever you want. So, oh, oh, I want to show you up close. Hold on. We are, haven't even come to a boil yet. It's just getting warm. And you can see the greens look like they're almost like half the size already, right? Did you see? It was filled to here. It was filled to the brim. And at, just as soon as the pot got warm, it cooked down so, so much. And it's going to cook down even more. Our mixture has come to a boil. So now I'm going to add the beans. I'm going to come down to a simmer and we're going to partially cover and let it go. So I like to do beans with my greens because I just really like the contrast of like the nice silky texture you get from the greens and the nice creamy pops you get from the beans. And then, and then I throw pasta in there because then it just feels like a really complete, warm, hearty dish in one pot that's filled with a lot of vegetables and fiber and you know, and you can make it with whatever you've got. So if you don't have collards, if you don't have dill, if you don't have parsley, you ha probably have, you probably have wilty radish tops, right? You probably have beet tops. I'm sure you've got, uh, you, you've got the greens you need to make this. Fennel, fennel fronds, that's fantastic. I really like carrot tops, but they can be a little aggressive, so I think they're best mixed with something more mild, like a little bit of spinach or Swiss chard. Some watercress would be good. Spicy frilly mustard, fantastic. Little frilly mustard with like smoky bacon, that's a good combo. Sorry, I went off on like a bubba gump shrimp kind of green situation. So now it's time for the pasta to join the pot. My collards have been simmering away and they are super tender, silky. Wait, I need to get you a close up of this. You have to see what's happened, the transformation. The transformation. These have been simmering and the liquid has very much reduced. There's still some, you can see, there's still some, but a lot of it's cooked down and the collards have gotten really tender and silky and darkened in color. It's a totally different thing than when it went in the pot, which is really cool. And here's our pasta. This starchy liquid, so this is the broth, this is the orchetti that's been soaking in broth and the liquid's gotten super starchy. And when we cook that up, it's gonna turn it into a really, really creamy sauce for our pasta. And while we're here, it's gonna get finished with some parm. We're gonna throw our bacon bits back in there a little butter. I'm gonna see if it needs a little more red pep. Cool? Now, this starchy liquid that's happened from the pasta soaking is really, really, really vital. It's gonna really thicken everything up. So make sure you get in the bowl and scrape every last bit of starch that's collected at the bottom. You want all of it. It's really gonna make this very, very creamy. Now, because we've soaked our pasta while we were doing everything else, it's gonna cook up really fast without a whole lot of liquid. Just watch, it's just like, it just like transforms. And this way we don't need a second pot, which is great. So once this comes up to a boil, it's basically gonna be there. We're gonna be ready to, to dig in. Finishing touches coming up soon. Okay, so it's really cool. It's like transforming in front of my eyes. Here you go, are you gonna bubble for me? I need to see a bubble, I need a boob lodge. Look at how creamy that looks. It's like practically coating the spoon. And once we add the butter, it's gonna be even richer. The pasta is cooked now, so I'm gonna pull this off the heat and we're gonna finish it up. Every time I've ever shot a video, I've forgotten at least one step and I forgot a step again. We wanna taste everything before you put your pasta in there. So you make sure it's really nice and seasoned and the pasta gets seasoned inside out. And I totally forgot, I totally forgot. I'm gonna taste it now. It's okay, if this happens to you, you'll be fine. I'm gonna be fine, so you're gonna be fine. But this is a trend, I've never shot a video for anybody in my entire time shooting videos where I didn't forget one thing. But luckily, that seasoned really well. <laughs> I just got lucky there. The big pinch I added at the beginning was enough. Okay, so. I'm gonna add a pat of butter. This is gonna enrich everything. I'm gonna add most of the bacon back. I like to keep a little bit 
to put on top and some cheese, but we're gonna hold back on a little once again for the top, a little garnish, and stir this up. Wow, I got real lucky there. Had a good amount of spice. It's like I've made it before or something. Okay, the butter has melted in there, the cheese is melted in there. I'm gonna give it another taste. It's delightful. We're gonna plate her up. Little bacon, little extra cheese to go on top. Let me grab my bowl. Gonna grab my ladle. I don't have a ladle, so this is my ladle. <laughs> I don't even have a big spoon. Okay, look at that. You can't look at it, but you will. You will, shortly. Okay, cool. Gonna finish it up with a little bit more crunchy bacon. Cause why the hell not, right? And then you know, you know what you're getting into. A little bit, little bit of this cheese. Yum. It's such a nice, like, hearty bowl that feels so rich and comforting, but. You're eating so many vegetables. It's like a trick, honestly, because it feels so rich. Like there's like a braised, you know, lamb shank in here, but there isn't. Wild. It's all, it's just collard greens. All right, why don't I get a little, a little crazy? Finish it with a little, little more red pepper flakes. You know, I like, I can take the heat. I like it. I like a little heat. A little, whoa, wow. Wow, now we're getting crazy. There's a fly in here that I've been trying to get for weeks. He's very comfortable, so comfortable. Look at how close I'm getting and he's not flying away. But he gets away when I wanna shoot him, when I wanna snack him. I guess he's just part, he's like another pet now, you know? It's fine. You know, at least he's being respectful. He's not landing on the food. Okay, here we go. Here is my collard greens with cannellini beans. So steamy. Mm hmm. Look at that. So here I've plated up a bowl of my didolini with chickpeas. Finished it with a little dollop of yogurt, some more parsley. You know, because we're here for the greens. So why not some more greens on top, huh? Mmm. Whoa. Look at that. All right. So I got my nice bowl of silky collard greens, cannellini beans, bacon, parm pepper flakes. This is great. Awesome. I'm digging in. Oh yeah, there's oriketsi in here. There's so much going on. It's greens, beans, and things. It's a lot happening. A lot of things. Mm. I think my favorite part about this is that you manage to get perfectly al dente pasta cooked in one pot, which is really cool. I, that is all thanks to Ideas and Food. Check them out. They also have a really good fondue recipe. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm getting like, it tastes super creamy, cheesy, rich, but it's, it's still pretty light because it's mostly vegetables. Awesome, right? That little bit of pepper flake cuts through that rich cheesiness. And I like the texture of like the chewy pasta with the crispy bacon. Make this, it's great. You've got, you've got what you need to make this. I hope you enjoyed watching me take beans and greens Greens and beans, that's not. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching me take greens and beans off script. And I let me know if you try this out, pop it in the comments below. How did you decide to take greens and beans off script? Don't forget to like and subscribe to watch me next time here on Off Script with Sola. <laughs>